For the last few weeks, I've been working on starting from scratch from zero dollars and building that up all the way up to 10,000 US dollars only using my laptop and internet connection. This is now part three of this challenge. If you haven't watched the previous two videos, I would kind of recommend you do so because this video builds off of the last two. But in summary, we got $316 in the first video and then the second one, we built that up to $770.62. So that's gonna be a starting budget for this video and we're gonna see just how far we can take it. And I got a few pretty good ideas up my sleeve for this one. Yo, what is good guys, it's your boy Beheza, and let's just get right into this challenge. So apart from the $778, we also currently have a running dropshipping website selling portable steamers that we built in the last video. We actually sold quite a few of those portable steamers using a beauty page that we purchased on Instagram. And then we actually made some money with it and then went ahead and sold it. Now these portable, portable steamers steam. aren't gonna sell themselves. So in this video, I wanna begin by continuing selling the same exact product using the same exact website and the same exact advertisement. Except now I wanna switch up my marketing strategy that will hopefully allow me to scale this product. Now that we have some money saved up and we also know that this product does in fact sell using Instagram themed Pages, since that's what we did in the last video using our own page. I want to begin not paying other people for their whole page, but just paying them a certain amount in order for them to post our advertisement on their page with the link in bio. You already know the drill. In order to find some good pages to advertise on, I basically had to spam the DMs of every single beauty page on Instagram asking for their promo rates. And then I kind of went from there. The big thing that I was looking for is good engagement since that honestly matters so much more than followers. Now that said, I actually found a page with a whopping 1.1 million followers that had pretty good engagement. The person wanted 150 dollars for a 24-hour post with a link and buy on this page she didn't get it ended up negotiating down to 120 dollars which might not sound like a lot of money saved but that's a whole one less portable steamer that we have to sell in order to be profitable i'm actually on here let me screen record this i'm on this page right now we're talking 1.1 million followers the page already put up our advertisement here it's saying the link is in bio and we got the link in bio here we got our website we are good to go we're gonna go ahead and see how this first advertisement plays out honestly i'm a little bit worried because in order to be profitable with this advertisement because we did pay $120 for it. We need to sell a minimum of three portable steamers. And the worrying part is in the last video on our best day after all these advertisements, we only sold four of them. That was a much smaller page, not nearly 1.1 million followers. So I don't know, hopefully this works out. Hopefully we don't lose money on this advertisement, but I guess we just gotta wait and see what happens tomorrow. 24 hours dopo. Uh, guys, relax. I know you can't recognize me because I did shave this morning, but it, it is still me. It's still be a hazard. Seriously, it's currently 12 p.m. The ad went up at 12 p.m. yesterday, so it has been a full 24 hours, and the ad is currently down. I took a screenshot of it before, like an hour before it went down. It was sitting at around 120,000 views, which which is all right. It's not incredible because the page does have 1.1 million followers, but I mean, it did result in five sales, which which equals to hold on 324 dollars and 95 cents in revenue and as you can see this all the sales happened right after the ad went up and then nothing happened after that so the the post didn't really hit the explore page which is why it has this low amount of views compared to its followers but we we were still profitable which is cool and 300 dollars in revenue might actually sound like a lot but after you factor in that we did spend 120 dollars on the advertisement then i calculated the product cost and that comes out to 109 dollars and 95 cents so after you subtract that from the revenue we're only left with 95 dollars which i mean i'm not complaining we were still profitable we didn't lose money which is great but here's the thing i really don't want to turn this into a 15 part series where i do the same exact thing and we keep up the same exact pace until we reach that ten thousand dollar goal i mean things are getting kind of boring here i want to spice it up i want to pick up the pace and i want to start scaling new plan instead of taking my time and weaving through and finding the perfect pages and doing one page per day i'm gonna pull a dak prescott throw a hail mary here and just run a ton of these ads at the same time at the same day even if the pages aren't even the best am i gonna gamble all the money we've earned thus far and jeopardize the series that I've spent so much time editing and filming? Yes, sir. 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 Yes. I'm still going to try to get the lowest price possible per page, do a lot of negotiating, but I'm just going to be a little bit less selective with the pages I choose so that, that way we can do more pages because even if the page isn't the best, if you have a really strong advertisement, it's really clickbaity, it can take off even on the page that isn't doesn't perform that well. And even if we're not extremely profitable, I'm not going to be mad because we do have a Facebook pixel installed on this website. So from all of these shout outs, we're collecting a ton of data on people who actually are interested in this product which we can then utilize later down in this challenge and really scale this to the next level. So even if I just break even, that's still gonna benefit us because I'm gathering a ton of Facebook pixel data. And I mean, at the end of the day, no risk, no Rari, baby.
Wow, what a great segue. Speaking of this No Risk Norari poster that you just saw, I actually want to start a little side project selling this something very similar. So there's this company called Iconic and they specialize in the sale of these motivational slash entrepreneur type canvas prints. This is absolutely not a brand deal, but all the ones behind me are from this company. The designs are cool, the quality is great, but the only problem with this company is that in order to get this big one right here, I actually had to sell my, yeah, my, my left kidney it brings me to a few months ago when I was scrolling through the gram and I got an advertisement for a different company selling these entrepreneur Gary V type beat posters. And when I went on the website, they were like a third of the price. However, it looked like a dropshipping website. So I went on AliExpress and to my surprise, AliExpress didn't have any of these prints, which means this wasn't a dropshipping website. And I figured that these people bought a huge inventory of these posters since there was a ton of different designs, ton of different sizes, which didn't make sense because the website itself looked like somebody's first attempt at dropshipping. So I was super confused by all of this, but I just went on with my day. Now, very recently, not sure why, but the dots inside of my head kind of just connected and I realized what these people were doing and that was print on demand. If you recall, in the first part of the series, we actually partook in some print on demand activities ourselves, but we did it with a t-shirt. That's kind of the common practice. People usually do print on demand with clothes. I'm not sure why I didn't realize that that's what the website that I was talking about earlier was doing, but you can do print on demand with a ton of different products and one of them is canvases. So that's the side project I want to start since I'm sure there's a ton of people out there who want these cool canvases but understandably, they're not willing to pay the big bucks for them. So I'm going to go ahead and design something on my own and kind of undercut the market. But for today, I am going to focus more on setting up our Hail Mary ad campaign and setting up as many different Instagram theme page advertisements as I can for our portable steamers. And I'm super excited for tomorrow because not only do we get to see how our ad campaign did, but I'm also getting to starting our print on demand entrepreneur canvas prints business. So I'll see you guys then. Oh, and one more thing I almost forgot, but a lot of you guys seem to not like the sound I use for my transition. So don't worry, I'm never we're gonna be I'm sorry please don't unsubscribe So it's currently the next day and although it's only 2 p.m. right now and the ads we posted up yesterday haven't even expired yet I already want to check in because we are already profitable. So I kind of want to explain how I want to do things moving forward. Yesterday though, I put up a total of five ads that cost me $340. Five ads, I know I said I'm going to throw a full Hail Mary and that I'm going to spend a ton of money. I only did five ads. But if you've tried running theme page advertisements before, you know how hard it is to actually get people to respond to you and then to actually arrange everything to get everything to work. It takes a lot of time. Oftentimes people don't want to reply. So I, I only managed to set up five ads. However, those five ads did pretty well. And at this point, I'm just going to rinse and repeat and continue paying new pages on Instagram to put up this ad. And this is actually exactly how I did things before I completely transferred over my actual dropshipping stores to Facebook ads. While all of that is running, I do want to get into that entrepreneur print on demand canvas business that I talked about yesterday. So let's just go ahead and dive into that. Our first step is going to be to actually create a design we can use. So I'm going to start out by going on some Instagram entrepreneur theme pages and trying to find what post performed well on there so that I can maybe look at the quote on that page and maybe use that for our poster. You know what? <laughs> Never mind. I think I'm just going to have to go ahead and Google some quotes for this. Okay, so I did find a quote online and then I actually went back and looked at some more entrepreneurship pages for kind of inspiration, see what designs get are getting the most likes and whatnot. And here's what I came up with. Here is the first option. And by the way, all of the pictures in the background are royalty free images that I searched for. And so these are basically free to use. You can do whatever you want with them. So first up, I made this post right here. Sometimes later it becomes never do it now. I, I don't know. I, do, I personally don't really vibe with it. It looks okay, but I don't think it would do too well. It doesn't look very professional. Then we got this one right here. Where you are in five years depends on what you do today. And it's kind of a villa picture. I, I, it looks very professional. I think in order for this one to work, I would have had to color grade the picture differently, but I just don't really vibe with it. And here's the final option that I do vibe with. It's this one right here. It's the same exact quote as the last photo, except now it's in front of a Lambo headlight. I just think this one kind of blends together the best and it, it looks the most professional out of the, all three of them. And part of that that I think has to do with the lens flare. If you actually look at the before, there was no lens flare on the letters, but I put the letters in, then I put a layer on top of that, extending the lens flare. So it kind of looks like it, those letters belong in this photo. So whereas with the previous photos, the letters just look like they really don't belong there. And I just slapped it on there randomly, but this one, they kind of blend well with the photo. So I'm going to create a Teespring website selling canvases with a sprint on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and promote that through some Instagram quote pages. I think it can do very well on those and we'll just see how that goes. Oh, and I am actually going to schedule some new posts for the portal steamer and continue scaling that so i'll probably check in with you guys tomorrow 
it's actually been quite a while since I last checked in. This is the third day to be exact. And this is actually going to be the final day of this video. We're going to go over exactly how the Steam Restore did in just a second. But first, I want to explain what happened to the print on demand canvas business that I wanted to get into. I did create a Teespring website for the Lambo print I showed you guys earlier. I paid an entrepreneur quotes page $40 to put up an ad and the ad itself actually did really well on the page. And instead of having the owner put up something that's just screaming, hey, uh, this is an advertising, I'm selling this. I had the owner put up two different slides on the same post. The first slide was just the design itself, just the JPEG that I put from my computer to my phone and sent to the owner. That's the kind of content the audience of the page was used to seeing. So it blended right in into the feed. However, when you swiped on the post, that's when the actual sell happened. And I put a mock-up of the design on a canvas. And I said that there's a link in bio and that it was on sale. And that's how I went about it. So the post itself got over 12,000 likes in just 24 hours. But from all this exposure, from all these likes, we resulted in a whopping zero sales, not a single sale from all these thousands of likes and all these tons of exposure, not a single sale. So that kind of got me thinking as to what, what went wrong here, because people like the design since it got so many likes, there's a demand for this product. However, I didn't think about one thing, the fact that I was selling a product to other entrepreneurs who probably chances are already know about print on demand and know that Teespring is a print on demand service. So when they saw that the link in bio was a Teespring link, they probably figured that, hey, I can just get this design, upload it on Teespring and get this product for cheaper. They probably never got around to doing that, but I think that's kind of the mindset there. And so I think I personally believe that the Teespring part of this was what killed this business. Now, at this point, I could have created a custom Shopify website for this product, bought a custom domain, thought of a cool company name, and then connected it to a print on demand service called Printful, which would allow me to still do print on demand and to have an actual storefront that looks really good and that doesn't have a Teespring link. So that would solve my theory of why we didn't get any sales the first time. However, I didn't go this route because I, I want to just focus more on the Steamer store because it's currently working. I don't want to spread myself too thin and divert my focus onto something else when we we have something pretty good here. Over the last six days, we sold a total of 67 steamers, which resulted in $4,299.94. Sounds like a pretty solid amount, and this is what people would show you when they flex their Shopify numbers, but $980 went to Instagram ads, $1,473.33 went to product cost, $131.39 went to payment processing fees. I also now had to pay $29 for the Shopify plan since our trial expired, as well as $9.99 for the reviews app. And then we had to collect about $20 worth of sales tax. So that money's not mine. All that combined brings our total profit to $1,656.23. Actually, no, I forgot about the $40 we lost through the Canvas Prince advertisement. So our real budget is $1,616.23. Even though we do have all these orders and all these website visitors, I don't think our Facebook pixel is seasoned enough to actually get into Facebook look like audiences right off the gate if we were to do that right now and to be profitable with that. However, what we do have have is enough money to go ahead and start testing Facebook ads for this product. So that's what I want to get into next. And by the way, this all worked out and I was able to pay for the ads and for the product cost because I'm basically disregarding the time it takes for money to transfer from Shopify to my bank account. I think normally that takes like two business days. For the sake of simplicity and for the sake of moving this challenge along, I'm just pretending that all these transfers are instantaneous. I mean, otherwise it would take me like three days between ads and I would have to wait to fulfill orders, making the already long AliExpress shipping times even longer. So it just makes more sense to go ahead and pretend that it's instantaneous transfers and it, it doesn't really ruin the challenge. But that said, we are walking away with some solid profits here. I'm really excited for the next part of this series because that's when we're actually going to get into Facebook ads. The pace is about to be picked up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.